Hi, I hope you're all doing well today. I thought I would come on and do something I haven't done in a really long time is a pattern haul. And it's not just um, current patterns, it's actually vintage patterns. I hope you enjoy this. I know that I have become recently, I guess you could say, uh, semi-addicted <laughs> to buying vintage patterns. Uh, some of these um, have actually been things that I've had before. I've actually owned these in the past and then I kind of went away from that particular style or no longer was making it, I lost interest and now I found it again and I am in love with it. One of which I guess I'll start with the Vogue's is this pattern, the Vogue 9020. And I actually made this, well, I've made all of these in the past. And I'm actually gonna put the year of each pattern on the screen so I don't have to sit and squint and try to figure out <laughs> as I'm filming this. Um, to be quite honest, I filmed this entire video yesterday and I didn't get to editing it until last night. And then I realized that Though I had brushed my teeth in the morning, I had some breakfast still in there and nobody needs to see that. So we're filming this totally again. Yesterday was a beautiful sunny day. Today it is pouring rain out. So the lighting is going to be probably disastrous, but in any event, we're here to look at patterns. So this pattern I have had before and I loved it. It's really good instructions, really well designed. And I have made this backpack before. I had made it um, from a curtain panel, actually, that I had found at a thrift um, flea market in you know the boxes that are underneath the table where you find all the really good bits. And I had had that bag for years, probably more than 10 or 15 years. And I used it constantly. I actually wish I had kept it, but it had been really worse for wear. And it, I think it's time it was time for it to go, but I have made a new one. I had actually shared this in a recent video of, um, I'll put up here in the notification or the cards, whatever you call it, um, that I had made this in a recent video of things that I've made from curtain panels and tablecloths. And this was actually a thrifted uh, curtain panel. And so I made the same backpack and I love this one too. So that is the first pattern. I'm really glad that I had uh, looked this up again and now I have it to make new bags. Uh, the next one is actually from another video that I've done recently. Um, I cannot believe actually that I have made so many videos recently. I had lost the YouTube bug and it, it, you know, I was kind of sad because I really wanted to make videos, but I just had no clear idea of what I wanted to do. And so I'm actually really kind of proud of myself that I've been consistently making them. They're not super great. I am still learning how to do uh, the whole video editing and all that. I am a, uh, uh, aspiring YouTuber. I'm just doing my best. And, um, but I really am loving sharing. So anyway, back on the topic of pattern, I did make this one recently. It's a Vogue 9340. And this one's not too terribly old, but I had made this particular view out of TJ Maxx shopping bags. So for the most crinkliest, crinkly uh, raincoat you could ever imagine, <laughs> that's what I used. But it is a great pattern and I would love to get some nice wool and actually make one for fall. I think it would be just super cute. Um, so that's the next one. This one, I love this pattern. Now I'm not usually a uh, Vogue uh, average or uh, advanced pattern person because I, I really don't like to spend just like forever on making something. I like the things that I make to kind of be relatively simple but still interesting and if I want to add anything to it like uh, hand stitching or beading or anything like that to embellish it I will spend time on it but in general 
I like them to be kind of simple. This one, however, has got all the seaming and top stitching you could ever want. Not to mention the fit is going to have to be really perfect on this in order for it to look really good. So I'm going to have to definitely do a muslin, which uh, I am not usually very good at doing. <laughs> I usually kind of skip that part. But I think for this, this dress is going to be really nice once it's made up. And this is the Vogue 2785 Donna Karen. I just love this dress so much. I find it's just got such a unique look to it. And I don't yet have the fabric, but like I said, I'm going to do a muslin just to fit it. So I'm excited to get yeah. to that. Uh, the next one is a Simplicity 5460. And this I in particular got for these little romper. I thought that would be so great on hot summer days to not only just be, you know, kind of hanging out in the garden, but actually to sleep in. I thought that would be really good. Very comfortable. You could do it in just a light, light weight cotton or wall or something like that. And I like the other pieces too, the little skirt with all the tucks and these little bloomer pants with the camisole, like all of that I would do in not only cute printed fabrics, but also just whites and creams and just have that very vintage look. These are the line drawings. There goes a truck. <laughs> and yeah, so this one, I probably should have been telling you all along. If you have any questions about each pattern, any med any questions, just ask me. I haven't done one of these hauls in so long. I'm kind of like <laughs> daft as far as what I'm supposed to do. This one calls for cotton tights, broadcloth. I think broadcloth might be a little thick. Um, calicos, lawn, chambray, batiste, and eyelet. Ooh. And soft linen tights, handkerchief, linen, chalet. But eyelet would be really cool. Oh, I'd love to make all those pieces actually out of eyelet. I think that would be wonderful. Um, Katinka, I bet if you're watching this, you're going, yeah, make it out of the eyelet. <laughs> um, this one I just got a couple of days ago. And as soon as I saw this, I knew I wanted this. I definitely wanted to make this version here because you could make that and not have to wear like anything under it. So for hot weather, any of you bustier girls out there, I know that you know you don't want any extra layers in the summer. That is absolutely the worst thing. Um, so yeah, I think that one's going to be great. And actually you can make that for like more of a fall type of fabric and then you can put like a little long sleeve t-shirt or blouse under that too. So I love this. The Simplicity 5895. It does have a little zipper in the back. Really easy. So I thought that was super cute. And this one I got. It's um, one of those Daisy Kingdom. Do you remember Daisy Kingdom patterns? Gosh, I remember being so into those once upon a time. And then I grew out of them. I thought they were kind of farty and now I guess I'm circling back and <laughs> now I like some of them. This is the Simplicity 7718 and it's this little, um, like a little throw on jacket. They call it a craft coat because they give you ideas on how to embellish it. I don't know that I'm going to be doing that. I think just to make it itself would be really cute and like a tapestry fabric or a brocade or even like a denim. Ooh, maybe a printed denim. So that would be really cute. I'm looking forward to that. That's just the, the back of this. a very easy silhouette. I like the pockets because I could throw my scissors or tape measure or whatever in there if I'm in my studio for, you know, the cooler months. I thought that would be really nice instead of like a sweater. So I got that one. Now these next two, they're a little more dressy. I'll do this one first. Now this is a very kind of simple silhouette. Uh, Simplicity 5187. I got it for this one. This is like with a lace overlay. And I just thought that was so chic. And I know it's not a terribly original style, but I thought it was just really pretty. Sometimes this kind of um, 
bodice when you are um, like heavier on top can they can how can I say this it can kind of look like um, like a sack you know for each breast is like in a sack like it's just not cut very nicely but this one looks like it's going to be really pretty and they have a version that can go like a halter neck or the straps over the shoulder. I think the straps over the shoulder, like this version, will be prettier for me personally. And I don't know if I'm going to have an occasion to make the longer ones, but you never know. I just want to make the shorter version. I thought that would be nice. And this one, uh, Simplicity 5559. I used to have this pattern too, and I never ever made it. I only up until recently had made my first slip dress, something so ridiculously easy. And I'm pretty sure that most every sewer or sewist has made a slip dress. But for some reason, I just never, I never thought to make one. And it was always one of those things that I had long coveted. Like I would see them, you know, in magazines or online or whatever, people wearing them. And I'd be like, oh, I would love to have one of those. And you know, you search around, you never find the one that you want in the store. Or when you sew, you're like, well, I'm not paying that much for that. That's just a slip dress. So I just never would have one. I made one recently and now I'm addicted. Like I want all the slip dresses in all the colors. So I love this one, how it has this floaty bottom or the little ruffle that's up on a diagonal. I just thought that was so pretty. And I could wear that with like, you you know, from flip flops to heels, just really effortless, very cute, very easy, has a side zipper, but I really love that. I'm so glad that I've got this pattern again and now I'm going to make it. <laughs> the next one is McCall 7981 and I am pretty sure that uh, my mom had either had this pattern or made this pattern uh, when I was in high school. I know I was hugely into Laura Ashley back then and now again I'm back into Laura Ashley so I want all the petticoats, all the layered skirts, all the camisole tops. <laughs> I want them in every color and pattern and fabric. I just absolutely have been in love with this style recently again. So yeah, really easy, but you could just make infinite combinations. Especially, I love the one that has the, uh, the double layer, the petticoat skirt. I think that is so cute. Even just to make that with like tank tops for the summer, it'd be so cute. Um, the next two patterns, I just love these illustrations. They are just the cutest thing. I honestly wish they had they would still illustrate like this. So cute. And I believe these are from the 70s. Yeah, 70, looks like 78, 1978. This one is just like a little camisole slash t-shirt with all different variations. Very cute. I'm definitely going to make some of these. I haven't made them yet, but really, really easy. Very cute. And then this one is the McCall 6050. And I definitely, I've already made this version, um, but now I have to make it again because uh, I've lost too much to actually wear it. So I may actually cut it down and just remake the shirt. But I love this. I love all the little variations and I definitely want to make one, if not many, of them. So cute. Yeah. The next, oh hello. Hello sir. You came to visit. So the next one also, I know I've had this in the past. I have made it in the past and now I have it again. This version especially with the little tie because the camisoles is one of those things too I've always had problems with because I have to make the top so big, but then the, the part around the waist and the hips is so big. So I love the fact that there's that little tie back that can cinch in the waist and still you get the fit on top. So 
So definitely I'm going to be remaking this pattern. I'm glad I have it again. I just happened to find it online. I love that when I'm just doing that late night cruising on either eBay or Etsy, just looking at patterns. And then you're like, oh, I remember that one. I remember that one. And this is one of set said patterns. I also used to have this. It's a Brooke Shields pattern. Oh my gosh. This, I'm definitely showing my age when this feels like eons ago. But this is the version that I love. I love this short little um, skirted version, but I'm going to make the back higher. I don't really need that deep scoop back. But the good thing with this is all different versions and it's basically the same basic dress. I am not really good with sewing with knits. In fact, it's proven in the past to be quite tragic. I am not the best. I have tried everything. I just, I'm not skilled naturally with sewing knits. I marvel at these women and sewing all the knitted things, all the t-shirts, the t-shirt dresses and mine. <laughs> They're not, not so far, but hopefully I'm going to give this a try. And I just think that those are just such great little dresses to just throw on in the summer. And especially when I'm just at home and working in my studio, I think that's just so great. This next one, oh, this is just so cute. I love this. This is a McCall's 8508. And I'm not so much in love with this one, but this is so cute. And this with the little sleeves and all those pleats out of like a really pretty chalet. Oh, so cute. I love that. So I definitely want to make one or both of those. I My goal is really, and it's, it's a little bit difficult when I thrift. I don't want to say a lot, but I thrift and I do find some really beautiful things. I think that I'm going to do a, um, a thrift haul for some recent finds because I have found some just oh, things that I absolutely love. Now, my goal is to have a predominantly like maybe 80% handmade wardrobe. I really would love to learn to make things like jeans, but I thrift jeans for, you know, just so cheap to, to me, it's just not even, it's not even worth it, but tops and dresses and skirts and things like that. Um, I'd like the predominant, um, the gist of my closet to be handmade, but I do find some things that for the price and, and the beauty and workmanship, I just could not resist them. So some things will still be thrifted. So this is the last pattern. Actually, I also used to have this pattern and I have made everything on here. I've made the apron, the dress, the pants, the little t-shirt top, uh, the McCall 6989. I used to love these New York, New York patterns. Does anybody remember these? That was such a nice uh, selection of patterns that they used to have. And the line drawings is actually inside. But this is just such a great pattern. The proportions were so great for the pants, the t-shirt. And I made at the time, I made this entire thing out of linen. And it was just so great. And I'm glad that I have this pattern again. Because I'm going to remake it all again and enjoy it. So, yeah, it's, it's nice, you know, when you've been sewing for many, many years and you find these patterns again that once upon a time you really love, I don't know, it's kind of like, <laughs> this sounds so weird, but I'm sure some of you will relate. They're kind of like old friends where you're like, oh, I remember you, like you were really easy to sew or I got a lot of compliments when I made you up and I wore you. Um, or it's something that you had made and you had for many years, like my backpack had been. So yeah, it's just nice to have them again. It's nice that, you know, you can still track down, you know, through the internet, you can still track down these patterns from years ago and rediscover them again. So anyway, uh, this top is kind of, oops, kind of funny that, uh, I'm doing a pattern haul and I have no recollection at all what pattern this was. I don't have it anymore because I looked in my stash, but it's a, um, it's just a wrap. 
you know, a wrap top with a bow. And it was pretty easy to put together. So I wanted to wear something kind of bright because it is like dark out. And I have lights on and everything trying to brighten up so you can see the patterns. But in any event, I hope that this gave you some ideas or inspiration or just was mildly entertaining. And I hope you have a wonderful day, um, maybe doing some projects of your own and that you stay abundantly inspired. I love you. Bye-bye.